Uh, I'm going to start with the thermo chapter. Uh, let's start with the bomb power move. Okay. If everything works out, uh, this will be posted Monday or Tuesday. If you want to see it, relive it again. Okay. Uh, for the bomb calorimeter, uh, let's talk about the setup and then something I've been saying in office hours, I'll let all of you know. Uh, for e any calorimeter, some of the cues equal zero. So there's two cues you have to worry about, and I'll combo this with delta H of reaction. Q cal is typically what happens. Usually your purpose usually is to find delta H or Q of reaction for the amount specified. That's usually the purpose of a bomb calorimeter problem. You will recognize a bomb calorimeter problem either because it literally says the word bomb or it might, uh, it'll have some sort of combustion reaction in it uh, and it happens in some sort of container and they measure a delta H of combustion. That could be another way you recognize it. Usually it has the word bomb in it. Okay, so you're going to go Q reaction equals minus Q cal. For Q cal, there's three scenarios. Okay, so scenario one, this is the scenario that of the video I posted before we covered this topic. Q cal is going to equal C delta T. I'd say this is the most common. Uh, this is a scenario when you take the they say the water in the calorimeter plus the casing of the calorimeter are all one entity. It's all conflated together. Just the calorimeter as a whole. The casing, the stirrer, the water in it is all one entity. Case two, Q cal is equal to MCP delta T. In this case, they only talk about the water. So the calorimeter is just the water in the calorimeter. We're ignoring the casing, the stirrer, all the other pieces of it. And so this MCP delta T is of the water in the calorimeter. This was true in the salmon example I did in class. That's what case it was. And then case three Q cal is equal to MCP delta T of a plus a C delta T. Here's a case where you, uh, they say the water and uh, the casing of the calorimeter, or they might just say the calorimeter, are both important. Uh, that happened in the homework example. So one of our OWL homeworks was this. Uh, how do you recognize which one it is? It just depends what they mention. So if they mention both the calorimeter and the water, it's the third. If they just talk about the water, it's the second. Or if they just give you a C, and one C, and that's it, and they don't mention the water, it's the first one. So you have to include whatever that is mentioned. Uh, otherwise, then, there's basically two steps. One step is doing this and getting the right Q cal. And then step two, step two is you're going to take the Q reaction that you just solved for, and divided by the amount given. So that Q reaction uh, is just generic or per one mole of whatever is combusting. And, but you don't necessarily have one mole. You might have five grams of, or whatever of it. So you need to adjust it by the amount given. Okay. Uh, sometimes it goes in reverse. That'd be a little less traditional, but possible. I would say the more traditional problem goes from one, one and then step two. Okay, so that's your bomb calorimeter problem. After, if you figure out, probably figuring out what the calorimeter is, is kind of the tricky part for some students. Otherwise, it's usually a very straightforward problem. They do not deviate from the solving method. So there, there's typically no trickiness to be had in this kind of question. Uh, related to this, uh, somebody asked about delta H of reaction and Q reaction. So let's do those two pieces right now as well. Okay. And person who asked it, I might have a clarifying question here. Uh, usually when we say the energy of reaction, uh, we mean Q reaction or delta H of reaction. Those are kind of synonymous for us. Technically, this is delta U. So 
Let's get that on the board here too. I'll put it over here on scratch the right. Delta U is delta H um, minus P delta V. So technically when we're talking about the energy of reactions, it would be a delta U, the total energy given off by the reaction. However, because the work term P delta V is small, then we say delta U and delta H are approximately equal. So in our class, 90% of the time or more, when we see an energy of reaction, usually we mean it's delta H, or sometimes you'll see us call it Q of reaction. We essentially mean the same thing. Person who asked that, did you want any more clarification? I think I did. I'll assume it was perfect then. Awesome. Uh, when would you be solving for this? Let me add that. Uh, you would be finding this typically for a bomb calorimeter for sure. That's this new reaction. Where else might you do it? Another a calorimetry problem like a coffee cup where there's a reaction and you want to know the delta H. That would be another common place. So calorimetry problems are common problems to find the delta H of reaction. Uh, where else might you do that? Um, Oh, I think I have a summary in my reader if I'm remembering correctly. So let me point you to there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is page 35 if you happen to have my reader. There are delta H problems, and I'm going to focus on delta H of reactions, and that's what was asked. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So let me go over the delta H bonus material here. Sometimes there's a conversion sort of question. This is one place where you see a delta H of reaction. Uh, here that sometimes a reaction given or it's alluded to some, because sometimes you don't need it. And they'll give you a delta H, but it will not be for the amount of reactant that you have. So you need to adjust based on the amount you have and you adjust via conversion. This would be equivalent to this last step here in a bomb calorimeter problem. Okay, so where you adjust for the amount given is the same thing here, but it could be a standalone question. So that's what I call a conversion because you're just converting the delta H to the right amount. Hess law will find the delta H of reaction. We're going to do that in a moment. Somebody asked about that. Nobody asked about delta H of formations, but that would be another way to find a delta H of reaction. And then what I was just talking about, calorimetry. That can be another way to find the delta H of reaction. Okay, so those are probably your four most common. Uh, Clausius clapron, we're going to do an example of this in a bit, but that's not for delta H of reaction. That's for delta H, what's the subscript? Vaporization. So this is for phase change delta H, it's not for reactions. Uh, and then the first law of thermodynamics, uh, occasionally, but it's less common that you'd use that to find the delta H. So these second, these last two here are more rare. Okay. Next, work. Since it's kind of related, let's do the work term. Uh, there's two classic types of questions and a couple ways to get confused. So let's go over all those. Work. W, lowercase w, as I write it in class, is minus P delta V or minus delta N using the ideal gas law, RT. Okay, uh, two styles of questions, using this formula or using this part of the formula, okay? So work is minus P delta V. P is typically in atmospheres. V is typically in works units of liters, but work is typically in what units? Joules or kilojoules. A common question, somebody was just asking me about this. You need to remember to convert. So, to go between the units on the right and the units on the left, you need to remember to convert between them. I will give you the conversions on the test. Uh, so you just need to find it. I'll give you a little test tip as well. So these are usually what I give you on exam one. This is in my practice exam reader, page three. And the conversion you would need is uh, right here to go between joules and liters atmospheres. That is by far the most common mistake. 
to forget to do when you're doing one of these because you'll calculate a liter's atmosphere so you got to convert to joules. I would, the little test tip I would give you, you don't have to memorize this page, but just be familiar with what I give you so that when you actually take the exam, like, oh, yeah, I know it's on the back page. I just need to find it sort of thing. Okay. All right. Uh, next, on the right-hand side, this is most classic when you have a reaction given. So work is minus P delta V. Uh, I wrote the wrong one. Minus uh, delta, oh gosh, that looks ugly. <laughs> minus delta NRT. There we go. Okay, uh, this is when you have a reaction given. Okay, most common mistake, what do you think it is? There's a couple. To the reaction, you should do... Okay, that's another common mistake. Nice. Which R value would you use? I would, you could use either, but I would recommend this one because it's already in joules and you won't need to convert. Both work. What do you think people mess up about the reaction? Uh, there's alcohol, we don't oh gosh, that is another one I didn't even think of, but you are 100% right. The, you need to do the dis difference in moles of what? Yes. Yeah, the gases only. Do not use the other substances. Thank you for mentioning that. Somebody else mumbled what I was thinking of. Balance. In my class, I often do not balance the reactions I give you So on the exam. So you need to double check that it is balanced. Okay, those are the most common mistakes. Otherwise, pretty straightforward right there. Okay, you're going to use one of those two formulas depending on if you have the reaction versus you have a volume or a pressure. Okay, for most people, pretty easy. Uh, and then Heslop. I think I brought a Heslop problem. Let me double check. But I believe I did, just in case, because I knew you all liked those, and I wanted to make sure to be ready. Let me just see if I can find it. And I think I have one that I haven't done in class. Yes. These, for me, tend to have like one level of difficulty, which would probably be for some students kind of in the middle medium difficult level, I would say. Uh, if you had to do me for 2A, same level of difficulty as you saw in 2A. Uh, I have two examples. Would you like me to pick the slightly harder one? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, let me write it down. It's going to take a moment. So here's my overall reaction. H2 gas goes to one half B2H6, that's a gas. Uh, so I want to find the delta H for this. So here's my uh, energy of reaction. This has four simultaneous reactions going with it. 2B, solid, plus 3 halves. O2, this is a 3 halves right there. Gas goes to B2O3. That's a solid. Let me put the delta H in a different color. The delta H, which is going to be in kilojoules, will go right here in this column. This is minus 1273. Okay, next, 2. Uh, B2H6, solid, plus 3O2. Gas goes to B2O3, solid, plus 3H2O gas. That's delta H is minus 2035. Reaction 3, H2 gas plus 1 half O2 gas goes to water liquid. And that's minus 286. And number 4, uh, water Liquid goes to water gas, and this is 44. Okay. All right, so I need to use the reaction in the bottom one through four to make sure they add up to the top reaction. Let's give this a try. 
Uh, my solving method, you can choose to use it or not if you like it, is to first start with the overall reaction and see what total appears only twice. So I'm going to start with the boron solid. Is the boron solid a good choice to start with? So I'm looking at this very first one right there. I think I like it. I'm going to circle it in green. It appears uh, only twice total. Once up there and once in the first reaction. So remember, you cannot change the top the overall reaction. You can only change, in this case, one to four. And so I'm going to multiply reaction one by one half positive or negative? Positive one half times that reaction. So I'm going to multiply through the delta H as well. Uh, I'll do that delta H a little later. But first reaction multiply by half so that there's one boron in the reactants. Is H2 a good selection? That one. I think so. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put a brown box around it. It appears only here, I think. Yeah, that's the only place I see it. So, I need it to be in the reactants. What am I going to multiply it in reaction 3 by? 3 halves or 2 thirds? 3 halves. It needs to match. So I need 3 halves of it on the left hand side. And it has to be positive because I want it to stay on the left hand side. Okay, next, B2H6. Is that a good selection? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let's go purple uh, cloud. Right now the shape's here. Purple cloud. And where was it? Oh, here it is. There. Okay. So I'm going to multiply reaction two by negative one half. I need it to be on the other side. So the minus flips it over and the one half makes it a half. Okay. I have exhausted all the reactants there. So my next step in my strategy is to look at the intermediates. Intermediates are things that only appear here, but not the overall. So in the first four, but not the overall. Uh, what's an intermediate? O2? Uh, B2? O3? Water? Gas? Water? Liquid? Is that everything? Yeah, okay. So now my second part of my strategy is to focus on those. So O2, would that be a good selection? That'd be terrible. It appears too many times. I'm going to do too much math and I don't want to think that hard. B2O3. How many times does it appear? Twice, so do I like that? Yeah, yeah but not here. Why not? Because those two reactions already have a multiplier, so I don't need to mess with them. I need a multiplier on the fourth reaction. So, would I pick water gas? <laughs> yeah, I think it appears only twice. Right here and here. Okay, so the uh, fourth reaction, I'm going to multiply by what? Three halves, positive or negative? Positive. Remember, I want this to cancel. Right now there is minus three halves in the product. This would make three halves in the product, so three halves minus three halves would be zero. That works. I could have also picked water, liquid, same answer. You can check that uh, if you want. So now I'm ready for my math. Let's do that. The delta H for the overall reaction, I'm just basically adding things up. It'd be minus 1273. Its multiplier was one half of that reaction. And then I've got the minus 2035. That multiplier was minus a half. Then I've got the minus 286. That multiplier was three halves. <coughs> And then the 44, that multiply was 3 halves. Well, did I mess the sign up? I think that's okay. Yeah, I think I got it all right. Let's see, I calculated this earlier. I got 18 kilojoules is my final answer. Okay, questions on this? Once I have a multiplier in all four reactions, I'm done. Yeah.
The B2H6 should be the same phase. I might have miswritten it. That's a solid pair. Uh, oh, when it was a gas here. Let me double check. Oh, it's supposed to be a gas in both cases. Oh, that's a weird G. Sorry. Sometimes I, my Gs look like S's. Okay. Good. Good five. Good. Okay. Oh, yes. One last question. If the H2O is on the left hand side, then it would have to match the sign. So, uh, right now it's on the right, it's minus, so it would have to be minus on the other side. Yeah. So if they're opposite sides, they're the same sign. If they're opposite sides and they're intermediates, whatever that sign is. Same question. <laughs> Uh, the H2O's are only in the, the second and third, yeah, but they're different phases, so they don't cancel when they're different phases. Yeah, that's the deal. By the way, reaction number three is a certain type of reaction. Does anybody recognize it? It's a certain delta H that has a particular subscript. What's that subscript? Uh, not for, I'm looking at number three. No, no, three, but you're close. It's the letter F, formation. That's the delta H of formation of water. You have one mole of the substance and it's made from elemental form. Okay, the fourth reaction has a delta H with a certain subscript and that is vaporization. Does it make sense that this number is positive, by the way? Does it? Yeah, it's endothermic or positive. You gotta put heat in to vaporize something. So that's why this one's positive. Okay, 